according to some brand new rumors and reports out there, yes, the Abrams Scott of The Rise of Skywalker does in fact exist, and it's four hours long. And it takes its time digging deeper into Star Wars mythology and pulling out things that were cut from the original film. So let's talk about that. So before we get to talking about this, let me just clarify this. Every single cut of every single film has a version that is way longer than what you see. Assembly cuts, what they end up cutting out to get to the final cut of the film, and then test for audiences and then do other cuts, is part of the business. There is Marvel movies out there, there's other Star Wars movies that are 30, 40, 50 minutes longer than what we saw in the theaters as the finished cut. Sometimes these films consist of scenes that just drag on too long or don't make sense or entire subplots and things like that. This is just normal. It's part for the course. Sometimes some of these scenes it can actually be very beneficial and deliver a better product. See Zack Snyder's Justice League. Sometimes they can also drag on a little bit and seem pointless because there's Nordic women just singing for 30 seconds while Jason Momoa continues to uh, dive deep into the water. I mean, see what I mean? I, you know, sometimes you can cut out something important, sometimes you don't. Who knows, right? Uh, we know Black Panther at one point, for example, had a four-hour cut. That was the assembly cut. And then they cut it down to what we got in the theaters. So it's been reported widely across the internet recently that, yes, originally J.J. Abrams hoped to work with George Lucas and they were setting up this thing and then it didn't go that way. And ultimately, he was given sort of free reigns and he delivered a film he wanted to, which is The Rise of Skywalker with Chris Terrio. But it didn't turn out the way everybody hoped because they cut out so much. So this is something that I'm inclined to believe is somewhat true. And you can see that with how it takes everything that uh, was set up that people might have loved or hated about The Last Jedi and does it differently, and tries to undo it and does its own thing, and goes very J.J. Abramsy for better or for worse. And that is problematic. It doesn't really fit narratively in terms of the trilogy. There's a lot of questionable decisions, and it's just one of these things where if you look at Star Wars as a whole, there's so many inconsistencies that don't really make sense, and they're all over the place. And overall, if there was a four-hour cut, that was to get released or something or fans start to campaign for it which they already are would that actually fix what people hate about the trilogy would that fix the last jedi i don't think it would if you hated the last jedi you would still hate what rise of skywalker does because it has to pick up those themes and those elements at best jj abrams and his cut of the film could be a longer cut of the rise of skywalker but you're still going to have jarring cuts and weird looking stand-ins and scenes that feel like they're from a different movie because they are because they were shot for The Force Awakens when Carrie Fisher was still alive. And I think it's just one of those things where I honestly don't want it. I just want to move on past the trilogy. I I'm sick of people just constantly, you know, talking about it, whether it's hatred, still reflecting on it, still making daily videos about Kathleen Kennedy or whatever. Like, I just want to move on past this and enjoy Star Wars for what it has to offer in the future, which is a lot. Like, I'm ready to move on past it. I don't need the Abrams cut. <laughs>